my name is Krishna Upadhyaya, and I am here today to testify as a physician licensed in the District of Columbia, a Ward 3 resident, and a board member of the DC chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Although I'm here today in those capacities, I also did want to note that in my professional role, I'm an assistant professor of pediatrics at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and have over 10 years of experience providing contraceptive care to adolescents and young adults, in addition to conducting research on the topic. Based on my clinical and research experience, I support the Council's efforts to expand contraceptive access through the Access to Contraceptives Amendment Act of 2016. Just as Sandra Day O'Connor is quoted as having said, the ability of women to participate equally in the economic and social life of the nation has been facilitated by their ability to control their reproductive lives. The sentiment she expressed has been borne out in decades of research demonstrating the links between access to contraception and improved health, economic and social outcomes of women's and families in the US and globally. Use of contraception allows women to control the timing of their uh, pregnancies and pregnancies that are planned and optimally spaced are associated with reduced likelihood of poor birth outcomes, including prematurity and low birth weight. Given that over half of all pregnancies in DC are unintended, 11% of births are premature and that 10% of infants are born at low birth weight. Efforts to improve birth outcomes, including access to contraceptives for all women in the district are critical. As a pediatrician, I obviously see the value in clinical encounters with patients and feel that clinicians have something important to offer in the way of contraceptive counseling and expanded contraceptive method choices for patients that come in for visits. Pharmacists, as an example, would not be able to provide implants and IUDs, which have been noted to be the most effective reversible methods of contraception available. And patients may also miss an opportunity for comprehensive contraceptive counseling and reproductive health services. I also recognize, however, that many women uh, pay, experience barriers to visiting clinicians in the office, either routinely or at particular times when they may be in need of healthcare service. And the national survey has found that nearly a third of women desiring to use the birth control pill have faced a barrier to obtaining it, and those include um, related to office visits and inflectable hours. Women who are often most vulnerable, including non-English speakers and women who are uninsured, are more likely to face these barriers. As such, I also see the benefit of providing access to contraceptive methods when feasible and safe in non-clinical settings. Bef because of the limitations of what can be offered through pharmacist access, I do believe that implementation of the proposed legislation should mandate that pharmacists dispensing contraception also provide high quality medically accurate information about all FDA approved contraceptive methods, along with information about where the methods can be obtained, both with insurance and through clinics offering services on a sliding scale. And examples of these materials could be dispensed um, are found at bedsider.org. Additionally, information about the risks of sexually transmitted infections including HIV testing sites and materials promoting condom use are critical and must be made available given the high rates of these infections. Just finally, I'd like to say one quick word as a pediatrician and someone who focuses my practice on the care of teens. Um, I feel it's really important also for the council to recognize that this is an important piece, but I, I do believe that, um, I do not believe that it is likely to significantly reduce our teen birth rates. And I think that's because teens have some very particular developmental concerns concerns with regard to seeking reproductive health services that may make it unlikely they will seek care directly from a pharmacy. And so in order to promote optimal service for any teens who do, I also think it's critical that implementation of this bill require pharmacies to train their staff and develop policies regarding district laws on adolescents' right to confidentiality um, and right to consent for contraceptive care. Um, along with other aspects of teen-friendly services. And I also ask you to maintain, I know all the efforts that you have done, Yvette, um, uh, Council Member Alexander, on expanding, sorry, um, pro teen pregnancy prevention in the district. Um, and so some summary, um, I and the DC chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics believe that this is a reasonable approach to add to the other efforts that you're already undertaking uh, for contraceptive access. Thank you. Thank you.